Saving money is boring. At least it can be. I talk to so many people online and so many of them have the same story of I get really motivated at the start, I save a ton of money and then it just gets boring. So then what they go ahead and do is spend all that money, feel massive, massive guilt and kick themselves up the bum and start the cycle again. That's exactly what's happening in today's Budget Bestie. Hi guys, guys, and I'm Byron Powers. Welcome to Budget with Ira. My name is Ira and on this channel we talk about budgeting, paying down debt and saving up for the life that you truly deserve. If that sounds like something you'd like to watch, please consider subscribing to the channel because we do have a lot of fun over here, bestie. We really, really do. In today's video, we're following on on my series of Budget Bestie. Budget Bestie is a series where people anonymously submit their budgets to me. I take a look at them and see what I might do if I was in their situation. This is not financial advice. However, some people find it really useful. The sort of ideas that I have might prompt them in a certain way, but the real knowledge comes in the comments down below. So if you do have an idea about how you might do this differently because I am not the authority, please let me know down in the comments down below because that is just wonderful nuggets of wisdom. So today's Budget Bestie is a very interesting one, so should we get into it? So today's Budget Bestie is quite good. So their main financial goal is to save for a house, then to save for maternity. So they want about 8k for saving for maternity just because their sort of money that they get for maternity wouldn't quite cover it. So it's just a nice little buffer to have, which I think is quite sensible really. And then after that is to be debt free. Now I might consider to do things the other way around depending on what their finances look like but let's look into it they've got a little bit of debt so there's not anything really to worry about but what i want to look at is their sort of information about themselves so they say last year i saved a lot of money i filmed weekly check-ins and kept on top of it i was obsessed in a good way this year has thrown up all sorts of struggles resulting in around three thousand worth of savings gone currently i have a 40 pounds. We want to save 15k for a house deposit. My partner has a lighter setup and puts 333 pounds in a month. So far we've saved 2,000 ish. My partner has never owned a house. I have unfortunately due to an ex-partner's addiction. Money was taken out of the mortgage without my consent. During the divorce I was left with no option other than to sell the house. I received one pound one. Wow. Since then having met someone amazing four years ago we're starting again with the hope to add a new addition to our family. Maternity is horrendous pay so I'd need about 8k to get by. We've never been on holiday so a holiday abroad would be nice too but it's not a priority. So there's quite a lot to get into here. So we need to approach this budget carefully. So they say that their priority is to save up 15k for a house and then maternity but the way I see it they've got some alarming debt and I say alarming debt not in the way that it is a lot of money it's all of it is in interest-free periods so that's going to eventually end somewhere so rather than getting stung with loads of fees my priority might be to clear the debt first but let's go ahead and let's take a look at this so let's get budgeting bestie okay so what i would normally use in these videos is i'd use this paycheck bill tracker sheet this is a pad of 25 paycheck bill trackers really good for people who are starting out with budgeting so they can make mistakes and tear it off and start again you've got 25 chances to get your budget right with this but this person's bills are a lot more than what can fit into this section so we are going to elevate slightly we're going to be using my personal budget booklet and we're going to move to a budget page that i'm not using because obviously I use uh, my budget booklet as a monthly thing and um, I don't need all of the budget spread so we're going to use this one today. So starting out this household has three sources of income so they have income one which is one of them, um, don't know, income one which is 2,400 and then income two which is the other one which is 2,000 and then they get a payment from the HMRC which is 159.60 so I assume that's like a child benefit or something like that that makes their total income of 4,559.60 okay I'm going to go ahead and quickly list all of their bills here and I'll talk to you about it afterwards Okay. 
Okay, so here we are with the bill. So let's uh, sort of figure out what they're doing. So they've got a bank fee every month of four pounds. I don't know if that's a charge for being in their overdraft or whether they pay extra to get benefits for their bank. Either way is what it is. They then pay uh, 40 pounds a month for like school lunches. So that is probably how they are able to spend less on their groceries. And we'll show how much they spend on groceries in a sec, but I would, um, probably let me get a red pen i'm gonna put a star by this because i would probably start thinking about maybe making lunches at home or encouraging the kids to make their own sandwiches and stuff like that just because i think that's probably quite wasteful when you think about it but you know it is what it is there may be sort of other things at play there so not anything to worry about their rent is 675 which is really really reasonable they've got apple pay they pay a lot for council tax they have like a dental plan for like dental fees and stuff like that. They have their union fees, content insurance. Their gas and electric is really, really high. So I'm assuming they're in like slight arrears or something. That seems exceptionally high. Uh, water looks quite high as well. Um, this thing here, um, it really grinds my gears how people are signing up for phone contracts, 50 pound plus. It is, that is excessive for mobile phones. That is so much for mobile phones in the UK. I'd definitely be looking at downgrading my mobile phone Phone, there is no need to have a phone that costs you that much. You are paying out of the odds. If you can't afford a nice phone, you can't have a nice phone, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, moving on. Swimming lessons and Go Henry. I think Go Henry, I don't think that's a fee or anything like that. What I think that is, is I think it's a kid's pocket money, which looks pretty normal. HP Inc., again, I don't really get that. Why, um, like people who don't need to print a lot seem to have that subscription. If it's a business thing, move it into the business, but it is what it is. And then they've got um, car insurance one and car tax one. The other car that they have, they pay like in the year for it. They like pay for a whole year up front. So I don't get by one person's car, they do that and one person's car, they don't do that. Uh, I, I, that doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, if I move this up here, this all comes up to 1,714.29, which leaves them with 2,843.31. So they do have a couple of envelopes. So let's go through them now. So first off, they have groceries and they tend to uh, budget 80 pounds per week, which is 320 pounds, which I think for a family of four, I think I think that's pretty i think that's they're doing pretty well with that as long as they're staying under 80 pounds i think that's quite good just think me and jake just by ourselves do 70 and i know that's pretty comfortable but 80 pounds for four people is actually pretty good uh, and then in terms of fuel for both the parents to get to work and stuff like that that's 320 pounds that's a lot but you know it just is what it is now in terms of spending so they say that when they have their spending money, they just spend whatever they have left. So they don't have a budget for it. So that's cool. And then they have um, another sort of category where they have two categories. So they have hair and then nails. Um, so they would like to spend £140 a month on it. Um, and I think they do, but they don't actually budget anything for it. So where we're at at the moment is this cost on, in terms of their envelope is £640. That leaves them with 2,203.31. Now let's talk about their sinking funds. So from what I can understand is that they would like to have sinking funds or they have some sinking funds, but they've topped them up and then they completely spend them, not on what they've intended them to be so let's go through so first off they have car insurance too so this is the other person's car and they'd like to have 500 pounds in that uh, at the end of the year but they're budgeting zero so what that tells me and and the thing is though what you're actually going to see is all of these they're actually budgeting zero so what it tells me is that these become unexpended spends when they are due so they're not saving up for them so all of these little amounts that i'm going to put in these columns they're all going to be unexpected costs when the event or the bill arrives. So this is why this number here dwindles down. So they've also got car um, tax too, uh, which they like to have 120 pounds and they budget zero. 
football, which is uh, for both their kids, uh, is like a, a yearly cost and that costs 255. They just pay that up front rather than having a sinking fund for it. Then brownies, I think for both kids. Brownies, uh, that's 75. Oh, it might be just one with that price. Um, yep, they just pay that when it comes up and that's zero. Um, uniform, so school uniform. No sinking fund for it, but they need to have 200. So when it comes time, they just and this is why they're eroding that and they feel like they're not really getting anywhere. Uh, and this is why they're saving up money to have savings and then all of a sudden this happens and this happens and this happens. Like this is why they're spending their money. This is what it looks like to me. They'd also like to have a house deposit. Um, we'll talk about that uh, because it's their main goal. So they'd like to have 15K there uh, and they don't budget anything for it at the moment and then they'd like that extra additional maternity so that should they start having or trying for a baby um they would be comfortably be able to supplement the money that they get so 8k but nothing safe so far uh, in terms of birthdays so birthday for both parents and the two kids they'd like to have 150 each so that's 600 but they just pay for it when the birthdays happen and uh, Christmas they'd like to have a thousand but you guessed it and then i've added an additional one because they're like i'd like to have an emergency fund i don't know how much it should be i think everybody should start with a thousand and then work to have six times what their bills cost so six times this so let's just start with a thousand and put that in so at the moment that's zero in terms of what they're planning to put in obviously when the bill arrives they're just paying for it right but that's what they're planning for and that's zero so at the moment they've got 2200 331 left over. Now we're doing debt instead of savings because we've chucked the savings up there. So in terms of debt, they've got one which is their overdraft, and we will do a debt plan here. Um, and the overdraft is a thousand. They say that there's no interest and they don't budget anything for it. Then they have um, like IKEA, maybe it's a buy now, pay later. They owe 2300 to the first one. So let's do Ikea number one. And apparently it's no interest. And then there is a second one to Ikea, Ikea number two, and that is 1,500. And apparently there's no interest on that too. And they have next as well, and they owe a thousand there. They don't know what the interest rate is, but apparently uh, they don't ask for anything. So at the moment, nothing planned to like sort of get out of debt or do anything like that. So they're still left with 2,203.31. So this gives them quite a reasonable buffer. So you can see how they are under a sort of false senses of cure age, you know what I mean? So what this budget is telling me is that, you know, you feel like you've covered all your costs at the start of the month, you get to the end of the month and you've got two, nearly two and a half grand. So you can start putting into some of your sinking funds, but then because you haven't prepped all year long for, I don't know, the football bill, all of a sudden that happens. So where are you gonna get the money from? You're gonna have to take it out of your savings. Like you've got no other choice because you haven't been laying the foundation uh, down on the hard work. Um, I don't know about this debt as well. I think, you know, these sound, well, overdraft, you're definitely getting interested in. I don't, I don't believe for a second that there's a bank out there that is letting people have uh, overdrafts without interest. Um, and then these might be in buy now, pay later periods, but soon they will end. And if they're anything like most other providers, then you're gonna get interest backdated from the date of purchase. So this is like something that needs to sort of get sort of control over it as quickly as possible. So let's get the red pen out and let's see what I might do. So starting with the income, I don't think there's anything that needs to be done with that. I think that's really, really healthy for a family. And I'm not really going to touch the bills, to be honest. What I will say is I would be looking to definitely downgrade these phones um, because it's, it, 
there's no need to spend 120 nearly on mobile phones. It's ridiculous. The other thing I'd say to take a look at is car insurance because that seems excessively high. Unless you've had a lot of accidents, I'll be looking to review that um, because I that that's a lot of money. Like probably should be looking at about 20 pounds or less. So without even changing anything i would still keep this the same because you know this is your way of life yeah these are your minimums and what you consider your two four walls and i don't really like to change anybody's bills because if you don't have to don't do you know what i mean like it's hard enough when you have to start to think about getting rid of like netflix and things like that there's almost i don't know i don't know i don't know what i'm trying to say but anyway let's have a look at the envelopes so i would keep groceries at 320 because if that works for you that works for you i wouldn't spend a penny over 320 for fuel uh, but I, what i would do is i'd give myself a budget for spending so i'd give myself and my partner both 20 pounds a week at the moment um just to spend because once you've got a budget you can stick to it right so for four weeks that would give you uh, 160 pounds and then hair and nails just give yourself the 140 if you feel like that is appropriate um, what I would do is I would introduce a household fund uh, and that would I give myself 10 pound a week yeah so I would potentially remove this and start funding grocery like getting groceries to refund that and move it from there but you know it doesn't really matter so this is what i would do and that makes 980 now i know we're spending more but we're being a bit more pragmatic and sensible about it right so i would uh, do that that leaves you with 1863.31 so let's look at these sinking funds right so all i'm going to do is i'm going to put down how much you need to save every month um for each sinking fund so 500 divided by 12 is about 40 pounds. So I just split it down by 12, yeah? Uh, car tax would be 10, football would be 20, brownies would be six pound 25, uniform would be a little bit less than 20, but it gives you a bit of buffer there. Um, house deposit, what I would originally do is 300, and we will come back to this, right? And we'll come back to maternity as well, because I'd do initially 200, just so you can start to get the ball rolling with that. Um, I'd do 50 pounds for birthdays, I'd do 80 pounds for Christmas, and I'd do 80 pounds for emergency. And what that all comes up to is 806.25 which then leaves you with 1057.6, yeah? So uh, I would then snowball all of this and I would have a debt repayment plan of a thousand pounds. And we'll go through that debt repayment plan in a sec. It would leave you with 5706, which I think is a generous and reasonable buffer if you decided to have a takeaway or something happened. But yeah, that's what I would do. So let's look at this debt repayment plan with this 1K and find out how quickly they could get out of debt while still enjoying some of these basics. So this one's probably gonna be one of the more easier ones that I'm gonna show you. I was thinking about doing a avalanche method just because there's probably hidden interest and stuff like that, but the way that it works out, snowball is probably the most appropriate. So what we're gonna do is a debt snowball. So let's list these debts again, but in order from smallest to largest. So there's two debts that are the same size. So we have next, first, and overdraft. They are both a thousand pounds. But my assumption is that um, the uh, next is going to kick in more interest than the overdraft, like more than what you'd know about. So I'd probably put that one first to avoid paying those fees. And then next we have IKEA number number two, which is 1,500. Um, and then we have IKEA one. Again, don't know what IKEA's interest rates are, but putting smallest to largest, these make sense, right? So we have no minimum payment, but what we've done is we've done a thousand pound snowball. So this snowball's never gonna change, but let's talk about this. So with our thousand pound snowball, we're able to get rid of the next debt in the first month. So that's completely gone. So what happens is that then trickles down to overdraft and then the next month we clear the overdraft. So we're two months in and we're already halfway through. So then we have IKEA number two, that's cleared in a month and a half. 
and then the thousand pounds trickles down again and that's cleared in two and a half months so that's like assuming there's going to be some interest so altogether it's debt free debt free in six months and that is so quick considering how much debt that is how much is it nearly 6k debt gone in six months that is really really quick and that's the approach i take because i wouldn't start thinking about my home until i clear that debt but horses for courses you might want to skip this step so now I've got a green pen because what I want to show you is what might happen once you've got this £1,000 available to you. So once your debt is gone in six months time, you've then got an extra £1,000, right? So what I would then do is turn this £200 into £700 by adding £500 to it. That would get you to eight k in like less than a year, like really, really fast. I would then add the other 500 pounds to this one, which would make it 800 pounds, which then makes um, makes it much, much quicker. But once you've reached this AK, when you add that seven to it, it's 1,500 every single month, which is <laughs> literally 10 months. So your dreams could come true in a very, very short amount of time if you sort of gain control, stop doing this whatever spending, like, downgrade your phones like do sensible stuff and stop spending your money and putting your money in the right places and stop like being surprised by bills have an emergency fund you know do all of that stuff so that's probably what I would do I think all in all, this budget was successful, but I'd love to know what you think about it. What might you do in this situation? And I know that this person's like top priority was buying a house, but I feel like dealing with the debt is the most important thing in order to make that happen. Because if you work on the house more than the debt, you're gonna end up getting stung and it's just gonna take longer. I feel like once you've got that out of your life, this can become so much easier. There's a lot of people doing a lot more with a lot less money. So I feel like this is quite achievable and quite realistic for a lot of people to make this happen. So I wish them the best of luck, but please let me know down in the comments if you might do something different best. Hi guys, guys, and I'm Mario Pals. Thank you so much for getting through to the end of the video. You know I love it when you get through to the end of the video. Please give this video some love. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you are going to comment, please use this emoji. What did you think of today's budget? Would you necessarily take that approach? The way I see it, the debt was going to probably become an issue if it was left alone and no interest was paid and all of that stuff. So I considered that probably the top priority and then get your dreams and hopes and aspirations done. So to have a plan where you're gonna be debt free in six months, I think is quite wonderful, really. Let's be honest about that. But what would you do? Let me know in the comments down below. I really hope you're enjoying these budget investor series. They don't get a lot of views compared to other videos, but I really, really enjoy making them. So thank you for watching them and thank you for getting through to the end of the video. An extra special thank you to the patrons and the channel members who make everything what I do possible. So thank you so much. I like, the support just means the world to me. If you would like to join them and support me over on Patreon, please take a look at the link in the description. You will not regret it, Bestie. That's all we have for this week. And until the next Budget Bestie next week, I would like you to have a wonderful day, have a wonderful week, and have a wonderful budget. Always remember, don't trust Ira. And Bestie, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.